Income tax 2023-2024, business expenses, pension plans, tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can avoid the government forcing us to move into a shack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Here we are in our first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Form 1040, example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. The standard starting point, Adam Tax Man, just trying to avoid a dang tax man, living in Beverly Hills 90210, single filer, no dependents. We have Schedule C income. Let's go to that Schedule C to see the flow through. This is the profit or loss from business. We have the income minus expenses because it's an income statement format. In essence, the net income, which rolls into the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income. Part number one, additional income line number three business income or loss from the schedule c there's the 100,000, which rolls into the form 1040 and we see it down here line number eight the 100,000 additional income from schedule one also if we go back to that schedule c we can see that the bottom line that net income of the 100,000 rolls into the schedule se self-employment tax and that calculates the Social Security and Medicare line 12, 14, 129. That rolls into Schedule 2, Additional Taxes, Part 2, Other Taxes, Line 4, Self-Employment Tax, 14,129, which rolls into the Form 1040. Page number 2, there's that tax, 14,129, Line 23, Other Taxes. Also, if we go back to that Schedule C, the bottom line, 100000 rolling into the Schedule SE, self-employment tax, where we saw the 14129 also has half of that 7065 which rolls into the Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments to income, page number 2, which has part number 2, adjustments to income, line number 15, deductible part of self-employment tax, 7065 which rolls into the Form 1040 on line number 10, adjustments to income. So we can see now we have the 100000 of income, Adjustments to income, 7065 gives us the adjusted gross income, 92,935. The standard deduction for a sole proprietorship, 13,850. And we also have this qualified business income deduction form, 8995. 15,817, giving us our subtotal here. And finally, our taxable income, 63,268. The tax calculated on page two, federal income tax line 16, 9,228. And the other taxes, self-employment tax, 14,129, given the total tax of the 23,357. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Back to the first page, we're looking at that Schedule C. Let's go on over to the Schedule C to check it out. And we're thinking now about the pension, uh, pension and profit sharing plans. Now remember that this is gonna be an area where there might be some planning and there also are some complications with the data input. So if we're doing tax returns that have a business component, including a sole proprietorship, some of the questions we might want to ask ourselves are, what kind of clients do we want to be picking up? Do we want just very simple Schedule C type of clients? In other words, people that possibly have 
on the Form 1040, mainly W-2 income and possibly some gig work on the side so that the Schedule C is pretty easy to deal with, in which case you're probably not going to have a pension plan on the Schedule C. Why? Because if they're a W-2 employee, they have access to a 401k plan and possibly able to put money into there and therefore don't need that push-up of the amount that they can put in to like a retirement plan uh, as they would need possibly if they didn't have a W-2 job where they can put money into like a 401k plan. Now, if you're looking at someone that doesn't have any W-2 income and they're getting all their income from like a Schedule C type of business, that's when you ask questions such as we saw in a prior presentation, the health insurance which is one of those areas where it's like, that's a personal thing, health insurance, but because of that intimate relationship we've seen between employee and employer for health insurance and tax benefits related to it, it gets tied in and we try to mirror that over here on the Schedule C and or on the Schedule 1 to see if we can take some of that. We talked about that before. Similar situation with the pension plan, which is saving for retirement, which again is a personal thing, so you would think you wouldn't get a deduction for it, except for the fact that the government wants to nudge us to save for retirement with these type of retirement plans, which include the 401k plan, an IRA is a similar kind of concept, a 403b plan, and so on. And because, again, they kind of tied this together with an employee-employer relationship, the standard 401k or 403b being something that is a benefit that we're used to through employment as a W-2 employee. And if we're self-employed, we're basically an employee of ourselves. And therefore, you would think that we should get basically a similar kind of benefit. Now, there's complications in terms of a pension plan for the data input to input it on the tax return. And there's also complications with regards to tax planning. In other words, as a business grows, they're going to eventually ask you a question of should I be putting money into a pension plan? And if so, what kind of pension plan should I be setting up? Now, when would that typically happen? Well, it's often going to be the case where they're going to say, I started putting money in here. Let's, and then, and, and now I'm starting to make money. Now I could put money into an IRA. So if I go on over to the schedule one and say, well, what if I put money into a standard IRA? So let's jump on over there just to check this out and say we put one to maximize the amount we can put into an IRA. That gives me 6,500 that I can put into an IRA for one individual that's qualified for the IRA, which pulls on over here. So if we had a sole proprietor business that can put that much into an IRA and they don't have any employees or whatever to worry about, then that might be the way to go because that's the easiest thing to do, right? That would be the first thing they could do. Next thing that probably would come up is like, hey, I was I was able to put a lot more money into my 401k plan than 6,500 that I can put into the IRA. So so I should I should be able to put more money away to match what I used to be able to do as a W-2 employee. Okay, well then we might have to set up something like a pension plan so that we can put more money away. Now note when we set up like a pension plan, then we have to think about not only ourselves, but also the employees. Now, it might be the case they don't have any employees, but they might have employees in the future. And if they do have employees, then that's going to influence the decision of what kind of plan we're going to have, because it's going to be a pension plan that's supposed to cover all employees as well as yourself. But most of the time for many small businesses, the first thought that comes up is, of course, themselves, right? Because maybe they don't even have any employees. They're just saying, I want to put more money into a retirement plan because I have the cash flow to do it. How can I do that? Well, we could set up like a 401k plan. That would be similar to what we would do. You would often see in a large corporation type of business. But the 401k plan, difficult to set up, difficult to manage and, and be in compliance and whatnot. And therefore, many sole proprietors might not set up the 401k plan. They might go for a simple or a SEP, which are basically really easy to set up for the most part and fairly easy to, to calculate. But again, we have to, it's going to be more complicated to set up a bit if, of course, we have employees that we have to make sure that we're in compliance with the SEP for the employees as well. 
All right. So we're not going to. So the so the question so the questions that you can come up with then is what what would be the best plan a SEP or a simple or possibly a four hundred one k plan for many small sole proprietorships it's probably going to be like a SEP or a, a simple. So I'll just work with a SEP here again. You could do more. You could drill down deeper on which would be the best plan, but realize the other question could be well how do I know how much money to put into the the SEP. Uh, or the simple. And that could often come down to you have to actually do the tax return because it's dependent upon your net income to determine how much money you can put into it. It's not just a $6,500 limit. It's going to be dependent in part on how much income you have. So that so it would be nice and could be the case oftentimes with like a SEP that you might be able to put money into the SEP after the tax return is prepared, meaning we wouldn't be putting money in there, or at least not all of the money in there in tax year 2023, but before we file, possibly even including extensions, which allows us to do that last minute tax planning in a similar way as you might see with an IRA. It's often the last question that you ask people. You could still put money into an IRA. Uh, do you want to do that, right? If they have a SEP, that could be a last minute question as well. And the SEP, could be more significant because you might be able to put more money in than uh, to an IRA. Now, if we don't have any employees and we're just dealing with ourselves, notice we're not going to deduct it on line 19. Why can't I deduct it on line 19? Because if you think about the W-2 form, remember the benefit we get on the W-2 form is related to the four, to, to the federal income tax. We still have to pay taxes on the money for Social Security and Medicare. So we can mirror that by by putting it on Schedule 1. So in other words, for example, if I went over here and I deducted 10000 for contributions, then then it's going to lower my income to 90000 which will be lower for federal income taxes, but it will also lower the calculation for the Social Security and Medicare. But... What if the what if this amount is not deductible for Social Security and Medicare, but is deductible for federal income taxes? In that case, we can't put it on the Schedule C because that would be deductible for both. So the equivalent of including it in box one as a deduction or reducing the box one of a W-2, but still having it in boxes five and three would be to put it over here. So we're gonna go to the schedule one and go to page number two. And we're gonna say that now we have this SEP, let's say. So I'm gonna take it out of here. So we, we're, we no longer have the IRA. That's not, I didn't get enough of a benefit for that. We're gonna say we're, le we're leveling it up here, leveling it up people. And so let's say that we put 10,000 into here. So now, if I go back on over, now I have the 10,000, which is an above the line deduction, the same impact on, in essence, uh, the net income, the adjusted gross income here, but it's not being included for the calculation of the self-employment tax, which is now being calculated based on the 100,000. So that's, that's why you kind of have to do it that way. Now, I'm not going to get into the, like the limits, but you can see that I already put in more than than the uh, the 6,500 I can put into an IRA. If I maximize it, I'll put a one here, allowing me to maximize it. And that means that the software is going to help me calculate the maximum I can deduct based on the information I have in here, which is currently at $18,587, right? Which is quite specific. And the reason that I can't possibly know how much that number is until I actually do the tax return, which which is why it would be nice for something like this to have it be the last thing that you do, even though it's after the tax year that you put the money in. Also note, that's a lot of money and you need the cash flow in order to take advantage of that tax benefit, right? Because you're gonna put this under an IRA, get the deduction right now, and then when you pull it out, you're gonna be hit with the taxes. But if I don't have the cash flow, then I won't be able to do it, right? I need the money to be able to put it in there. So then I'm going to go back on over to the form 1040. So so now I've got so so now I've got the 100,000 and then the adjustments to income 
and it's and it's being impacted here and so on and so forth but it's not having an impact on the schedule se now of course if we adjust our schedule c income and say let's make let's say we make more money let's say we add another like two hundred thousand. so now if i go back on over and i go to the schedule c we've got the net income at three hundred thousand. If I go back into my schedule one page two, it's calculating $57,210 uh, that we can basically put into a SEP, which again, substantially more than we could, that we were capped on to put money into, into like the IRA. So, so that's going to be the general idea there. Now, if you do have employees, then, then you might be putting money into the retirement or pension plan for them. The money that you're putting into the retirement or pension plan for the employees would be included on line 19. So from a bookkeeping standpoint, we've got to keep those, we've got to keep those two things separate. What would probably happen is that as you, as you deal, you, you'd be given it, it when you put money into your employees plan, you would probably see that in your bookkeeping and recording it easily on the profit and loss statement. Meaning if you put 10,000 in, it would be deductible. It would show on the income statement we get from the bookkeeping and it would show here, not a problem. We would not have given ourselves anything possibly for the, for 2023, because we would be saying, I'm going to wait until we do the calculation so that that's my last minute thing that I do, or I might put some money in and then, and then wait to the last minute calculation. So I can know exactly how much I can put in if I'm able to do that, which means that then once I do the tax return based on this information, I could do the calculation we did over here, allowing me to, to, to know how much money I can put into my, my SEP, for example, and then, and then again, we'd put money into the SEP, which would have to be an adjustment to income rather than on the Schedule C. So just note from a bookkeeping standpoint, that could cause a little bit of confusion because now this actual payment would be made in 2024 for tax year 2023, and it's not on the Schedule C, which is kind of like the income statement for the business. So you might actually, from a bookkeeping standpoint, transfer the money out as a draw from the from the business to the the personal and then and then checking account and then make the payment from the personal checking account in uh, 2004 for for this payment that's going to be applied to tax year 2023 putting money into to the SEP which isn't which again isn't exactly like a business expense you're getting a deduction for it even though it's a personal thing because again, because of the wonkiness of the tax code, because they're trying to, in theory, incentivize us to uh, save for retirement with this nudging kind of concept.